We're not allowed in again today. Isn't that sad? And I wonder about Christy who thinks that uh, our uh, sovereign republic of Ireland is wrong. And he doesn't have a license and he doesn't have to show today. That's our type of reply. It's sad. Because we read the proclamation. Anyway. Oh, probably, but he can say it. You've seen it yourself. Now we want somebody to read the proclamation. And uh, Ireland has been hijacked by a foreign power. The guards are taking their the guards are taking their orders from a foreign power. These have got to back the Irish people. And then we'll take back this house. Lord Mayor Exactly. <laughs> James is going to read the proclamation, and you'll see that I hold the tricolour flag. The reason we hold the tricolour flag, it's possession of the tricolour flag. It is our tricolour flag, taken down by Dermot Lynch, the GPO in 1916, and kept in Paul's Hotel. On, it was ratified here on the 21st of January by all the people of the 32 counties. And the green is nearest the pole, white and orange. And that's, that's what it is. The proclamation of Pagot Naheran, the provisional government of the Irish Republic for the people of Ireland. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which he receives the old tradition of nationhood, Ireland to us summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Having organized and trained her manhood to her secret revolutionary organization, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and to her open military organizations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army. Having patiently perfected her discipline, having resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself, she now seizes that moment. And supported by her exiled children in America, and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength, she strikes in full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the Irish people to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right, nor can it ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have accepted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. On the days they have accepted it in Arabs. Standing on that fundamental right and again accepting it in Arabs in the face of the world, we hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign independent state. And we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in Arabs to the cause of its freedom of its, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and of all its parts cherishing all the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided the minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all our men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic in trust for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms. And we pray that no man who serves that cause will dishonor it by cowardice, inhumanity, or rapine. In this supreme power, the Irish nation must, by its valor and discipline, and by the readiness of its children to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the provisional government, Thomas J. Clark, 
Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, P.H. Grace, Evan Kant, James Connolly, Joseph Plunkett. The Sovereign Constitution of the Irish Republic, the Republic of Ireland. To thee, the Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Ghost, we the people of Ireland dedicate our Constitution and beg the guidance of the Holy Spirit that it may be in resonance with thy divine will and contribute to the holy, thy greater glory. Amen. This Constitution shall be the Constitution of the Republic of Ireland, proclaimed in arms on Easter week, April the 24th, 1916, and established by the will of the people of Ireland on January the 21st, 1919. Article 1. The, the sovereignty of the nation is inalienable. It is therefore not within the competence of any generation of the people to surrender that sovereignty, with each generation holds in trust for the nation. The question of sovereign surrender to national independence may not be submitted to an electorate. Subject to that fundamental principle, it is hereby declared that all authority in Ireland, legislative, executive and judicial, and all powers of government are, are derived solely under God from the people of Ireland. These powers are inherent in the people alone by virtue of their sovereignty. They must be exercised in accordance with the, principle of, the principles of liberty, equality and justice for all. Any legislation not in accordance with these principles is hereby declared to be null and void. Freedom of conscience may be guaranteed to every citizen. No law shall be made to prohibit or restrain the free exercise of any religion subject to private order or, or morality. While providing for entire freedom of conscience for every citizen, this constitution takes cognizance of the fact that the population of Ireland, being predominantly Catholic, no legislation which is definitely anti-Catholic will be provided for. Hence the insolubility of marriage is declared. Article 10. The nation guarantees to every Irish citizen opportunity for service, a just and adequate share of the national wealth, right of the national service and living and working conditions conducive to the moral and material well-being of the workers. The nation shall provide each control of the nation wealth and resources and secure such development thereof as may be necessary to fulfil these obligations. The nation shall demand from each of the citizens the performance of the duties to the best of his ability. The land of Ireland belongs to all the citizens of Ireland and to them alone. Let's hope the fun power takes that on board. Before I read this Declaration of Independence, I would like to say a few words on my own behalf, and I think it's probably on behalf of a lot of you. I think it's a crying disgrace that we're only less than a year away from 1960 and centenary, and we have to stand out here in the cold on a day which should be one of the most sacred days in Ireland, and the Irish people in the 32 county vote at the time in 1918 actually voted for the independence of Ireland, ratified the 1916 proclamation, declared their international policy before the world, and on top of that, issued a formal declaration of independence, vindicated the uh, proclamation of 1916 and the rising by legal government here in this building, and 
That has all been shoved under the carpet and they're attempting... My God, I'm getting it something different from the other one. I have to be able to dance. But I do think that you people who represent the decent, honourable people of Ireland that want your independence, that want to put your pride of place, that want to declare that the 1919 Declaration of Independence and all the other documents done here by the first all are as relevant to you today as they were then. Remember that the Republic of the 32 counties was never voted out. It was suppressed by civil war by the Free State in Britain in 1922 uh, to 23. But in fact, legally, and the jure, the Republic of Ireland still lives. And we are here to vindicate that today. Now you should be inside, first of all, uh, Billy Maguire here, who is the traditional and his family holder of the seals of, of Ireland and of sovereignty, should have been allowed in with dignity, with a committee, into the Oak Room to celebrate yeah, uh, this yeah. important yeah. 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 uh, Secondly, the round room here beside us, the, the, the return that we will call it, that is for the TDs that weren't in jail at the time and the general public and the volunteers and anyone could get in where they are. And we should have had a ceremony in there today in the round room after the official one here in the Oak Room but the documents could be read in peace. We could discuss between you where we are today and how we're going to move back to where we were and what our forefathers and mothers died for, which is the independence of Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I always had, on a personal note, a, a great um, respect for the Lord Mayor there, as he was some years ago, as a Republican in the cause of Ireland. He did suffer, he did do time in jail. I always regarded him as a sincere Republican. And he even went independent in the end, but I said, no man like him will lose what he believes. And today, the Lord Mayor, claiming to be a Republican, has barred you, the representative of the people of Ireland, from your house. And I think it's a disgrace. I would denounce him for it. He's no Republican, and he's a, a disgrace to both Dublin and Ireland. No more because I, I, I say this. They will try and totally wipe out of history the fact that the Irish people voted for a republic and it still exists. That you're there to reclaim. And in 1916, centenary next year, it's most important that people like you, the ordinary people of Ireland who elected that government, are allowed in here and into the round room. And if they don't open the doors, Bring plenty of friends with you and a couple of good bathroom rams. <laughs> my God, I'm telling you, the time has come to stand up. No longer should you be out in the cold being treated with disrespect. You are, as Billy said, the sovereign people of Ireland. Go to me the market. We should have the Irish girls and the Irish army behind us. But they've sold out also. This is the official declaration of independence of the first All Ireland Dáil Éireann. January the 21st, 1919. Whereas the Irish people is by right a free people. And whereas for 700 years the Irish people have never ceased to repudiate and has repeatedly protested in arms against foreign occupation. And whereas English rule in this country is, always has, has been, uh, oh God, I'm Whereas the Irish Republic was proclaimed in Dublin on Easter Monday 1916 by the Irish Republican Army acting on behalf of the Irish people. And whereas the Irish people is resolved to secure and maintain its complete independence in order to promote the common weal, to re-establish justice, to provide for future defence, to ensure peace at home, and goodwill with all the nations and to constitute a national policy based upon the people's will with equal rights and equal opportunities for every citizen. And whereas in the threshold of a new era in the history, the Irish electorate has in the general election of December 1918 seized the very first occasion to declare 
by an overwhelming majority its firm allegiance to the Irish Republic. Now therefore, we, the elected representatives of the ancient Irish people and National Parliament assembled, do in the name of the Irish nation ratify the establishment of the Irish Republic and pledge yourselves and our people to make this declaration effective by every means at our command. We ordain that the elected representatives of the Irish people alone have power to make laws binding on the people of Ireland, and that the Irish Parliament is the only Parliament to which the, pe is the, only Parliament to which the people will give its allegiance. We now solemnly declare foreign government in Ireland to be an invasion of our national right, and we will never tolerate, and we demand the evacuation out of the country by the English garrison. We claim for our national independence the recognition and support of every free nation in the world. And we proclaim that, independ that independence to be a condition precedent to international peace hereafter. In the name of the <coughs> Irish people, we humbly commit our destiny to Almighty God who gave our fathers the courage and the determination to persevere through long centuries of a ruthless tyranny and strong in the justice of the cause which they have handed down to us. We ask his divine blessings on this, the last stage of the struggle we have pledged ourselves to carry through to freedom. Volunteer. Can I do it? Yeah, <coughs> this is an honor. The nation of Ireland, having proclaimed for national independence, called through her elected representatives in Parliament assembled in the Irish capital on January 24th, 1919, upon every free nation to support the Irish Republic by recognising Ireland's national status and her right to its vindication at the Peers' Congress. Nationally the race, the language, the customs and the traditions of Ireland are radically distinct from the English. Ireland is one of the most ancient nations in Europe as she has preserved her national integrity vigorous and intact through seven uh, centuries of foreign oppression, she has never relinquished her national rights and throughout the long era of English usurpation, she has in every generation de defiantly proclaimed her inalienable right of nationhood down to her last glorious resort to arms in 1916. Internationally, Ireland is the gateway of the Atlantic Ireland is the last outpost of Europe towards the West. Ireland is the point upon which great trade routes between East and West converge. For independence is demanded by the freedom of the seas. For great harbours must be open to all nations, instead of being monopoly of England. Today these harbours are empty and idle solely because English policy is determined to retain Ireland as a barren bulwark for the English, uh, what's that one? Aggress, aggrandizement, yeah, aggrandizement, and the unique geographical position of this island, far from being a benefit and safeguard to Europe and America, is subjugated to the purposes of England's policy of world domination. Ireland today reasserts her historic nationhood and more confidently before the new world emerging from the war because she believes in freedom and justice and the oppression between the peoples for equal rights against vested privileges and ancient tyrannies because the permanent peace of Europe can never be assured by perpetuating military dominion for the profit of empire and but only by establishing the control of government in every land upon the basis of the free will of a free people an existing state of war between Ireland and England can never be ended until Ireland is definitely evacuated by the armed forces of England. For 
these, among other reasons, Ireland resolutely, irrevocably and determined at the dawn of the promised era of self-determination and liberty that she will suffer foreign denom uh, domin da uh, domination no longer, calls upon every free nation to uphold her national claim to complete independence as an Irish Republic against the arrogant pretensions of England, founded in fraud and sustained only by an overwhelming military occupation and demands to be confronted publicly with England at the Congress of the Nations in order that the civilised world have not judged between English wrong and Ireland, Irish right may be guaranteed to Ireland its permanent support for the maintenance of her national independence. Central Office at Leinster House, and then we hope to go down to uh, 16 Number Street where James Stevens founded the Irish Republic and Brotherhood on St. Patrick's Day, and we come up top of the street to Sean Tracy's, and uh, we go, we're going to the GPO to read the proclamation there. We're welcome there, and we've been invited there, and to the Garden of Remembrance. We finish at the Garden, go across the Bones Hotel, where the stage was founded. And it's interesting to note that two days in 1919, on the 20th, all the institutions of the state were up and working on this day. And the Irish Republican Brotherhood founded and funded uh, all the institutions of the state. Uh, the Sovereign Republic of Era, the Irish Republican Brotherhood commemorating the 96th anniversary of the Sovereign Republic of Era, the 96th anniversary of Dáil Éireann, the 96th anniversary of the Sovereign Republican Dáil Éireann Courts, which are the four courts, the 96th anniversary of the War of Independence as a defence force, Anno Domine 2015, I, William James Maguire, elevated and turned from this centre the Mansion House Dublin, the Sovereign Seal of Dáil Éireann, AD 12 strings, a Christian symbol and ethos, from the rising sun to the setting sun, from north to south and from east to west, and from wrong to right, from evil to good, and from pagan to Christian to sovereign, as in the 1916 proclamation. And I claim sovereignty over all the, the elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And water is very important. You claim it here today as your water. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sovereign citizens, which are you, and and the Sovereign Republic of Era, and its intellectual reason, signed and sealed on this day, the 21st of January 2015, under the Sovereign Seal of the Sovereign Republic of Era, William James Rivera, President of the Irish That's the Sovereign Seal of Dáil Éireann, and when it's on the tricolour, it's the Sovereign Republic of Era. That's how you know the difference. And this is all our territory. We have the largest territory in Europe. That's an official map. And you'll see, which they have tried to take off. You see there, they have tried to move that border without distressing anybody into claim the six counties. But that's not so. That's what we claim today. And it's I, William James Maguire, claim sovereignty over all our territories, rivers, lakes, seas, fishing, <laughs> fishing rights, mineral rights, licenses and all the assets of the state on behalf of the sovereign citizens and the sovereign republic of era and the irish republican brother signed and sealed on this day the 21st of january 2015 under the sovereign seal of the sovereign republic of era and that's that that's yours and i asked when i rang that doorbell i, I asked the attendant that i asked that christy Burke would show the license he has today all licenses are only legal, valid and bona fides from the 21st of January to the 20th of January and each and every year they return back to the sovereign citizens and the sovereign government of the sovereign republic of Era. You own the licenses and without the license you can't trade in the state. And I've explained the license, that's the sovereign seed, that has to be on the third streets with Era underneath it. If it doesn't have Era underneath it's not the sovereign republic of Era. So you should discard it. 
honour our forebearers' action as a step along the path towards a freedom that's before us while it's still within our grasp. We may be a small nation, but we can fight above our weight. As individual sovereigns, we instinctively know what's right. With self-determination, we resisted controllers in the past. Now let's renew our inner knowing, establish a freedom that will last. The Harper National Seal, a covenant between God and man, a multi-useful instrument showing the way across sea and land. Learn of its hidden uses, Honour the pride we rightly feel by turning up at the mansion house for the turning of the seal. A golden fringe around a flag is a symbol of maritime law and barristers serving bankers, their commitment is to the bar. Leading back to the city of London, a state within a state, this calls for comprehension, then we must do what's right. Look into the Anglo-Saxon mission to gain insight to their plan. Then the chaos that surrounds us on the sea and on the land will make perfect sense to those who agree with their evil deeds while they reduce the population of everything that breathes. The common law of the land should be backed by our constitution and the fringe around the flag means maritime law and great deception. Serving the bar is evidence of the treason with legal ease and secret rights, they wage war against our freedom. The ancient people of this land used the Breton law with wisdom, common sense and understanding and a fairness what is more. Tap into this ancient wisdom, its guidance to reveal as you join us at the mansion house for the turning of the seal. Thank you very much.